Hello and welcome to the new episode of the Network and Cisco Packet Tracer Tutorials for Beginner. CRH is here and in today's tutorial I'm going to talk about the access list. An access list or ACL is a series of the rules that instruct the device like a router or firewall on how to select or match a route or a packet. In the Cisco world, iOS uses ACL as an extremely general mechanism for controlling many kind of the device behavior. We are not only use the access list to controlling the access and the traffic, but also we are using the ACLs to performing the NAT, providing the quality of service, and implementing the policy routing and the route filtering. Before I am recording this video, I think if I don't provide any specific scenario for you, first of all, it's very difficult for me to explain how the access list works and it's very difficult for you to understand what is access list and how it works. So I implement this scenario for you. As you can see, we got three different routers, R1, R2 and R3, which are connected to different networks. Uh, here on R1, we got 192.168.1.0/24 or 255.255.255.0. On R1 side, we got 192.168.2.0 network/24, and in R3, res uh, respectively, we got 192.168.3.0/24 network. And uh, there are some connections between these uh, routers and the routing protocol also implemented, so no need to worry about that. The full communication is now provided for these networks. We got two PCs here and two servers which provide the web, FTP, and similar services. And one laptop is connected to our three segments network. So let's uh, check uh, before we're going to access list some connectivity tests. I'm testing with the PC1. Let me, can I see ping the web server down there, 192.168.1.10. Okay, I can ping it. And let me see, can I see uh, the web server on that, 192.168.1.10 is address. Okay, web server 1 is working. Let me change the address and go. And web server 2 also is available from the PC 1. And let's try the same test here 192.168.1.10 okay both available successfully and we got the full connectivity from the 192.168.2.0 segment to the 192.168.1.0 segment so uh, let's start with the standard access list. Uh, just for your information, generally we got two major types of access list, standard and extended. In the standard access list, the access list works and make a decision based on the source IP address. And in extended access list, you will see in other videos, uh, the decision of the traffic is made based on the source, destination address, a protocol as well as the port number which is more flexible compared to the standard access list you got more option on that uh, but obviously it's uh, consume more process from the device and they also become a bit complex for the students so let's start with the R1 and see how can we create the standard access list here we go on R1 uh, enable the router Go to global configuration mode and to create the number standard access list, we are using the access list command. Use the question mark as usual to see what option we got. Okay, we got two options here. If we want to create the standard access list, we have to choose the number between 1 to 99. And if we want to create the extended access list, we have to go about the 100 and between the 100 and 199. So we are going to create one standard access list like number 10 and now we're using the question mark to see what option we got this time. We got three different options. Deny to reject the traffic. If we choose a permit we allow and forward the traffic here and if we want to make any comments on an access list entry we can use the remark keyword here. So let's start with this scenario and 
start to block the traffic from the PC1 to the server segments. As you as you seen before, uh, the PC1 can easily access to the both web server here, but this time we want to block only the PC1, not entire segment. Okay, so we using the deny keyword, and here we go. So access list 10, deny, and use a question mark this time and here we go we got three options first of all we can enter the host keyword if we want to only make a single a specific address we can choose the any for any source host the standard access list don't forget only works based on the source address range and also we can provide any address here as you can see if we want to work with only one host I choose the host and the option I got is include the host address which is 192.168.2.101 and finally just press enter let's take a look at the entire command access list 10 standard access list deny reject the traffic from the host the specific host this is the host we want the PC1 to reject so remember uh, there is an access list or processing from the top to down, one line at a time, and when the match is made, the processing of the access list stops. This is a very important rule to remember when building and troubleshooting ACLs in uh, real networks. And always remember there is a one invisible implicit deny at the bottom of our any access list. Uh, let me show you this one. Okay, no, it's not here. I need to create the one more note for you. Additionally, okay, why not we create like this? Here we go. I'm going just to make me pause the video for a while. Okay, here we go. This is the note I'm talking about. Uh, let's say we got access list 10 in this form access list 10 deny host 192.168.2.101. The second line access list 10 deny host 192.168.2. 102 another host and finally due to the implicit deny at the end of we need to permit any other traffic is going to our access list access list 10 the same access list permit any and since the process from the top down is very important how you create the sequence of this each line uh, if, let's say if we change the access list to this mode, the big difference is access list 10, list 10 permit any is goes to the top and when the access is processing from top to down, the access list realize the first line is match and stop and practically these two line is useless in this case and it's not useful for R. So let's go back to our scenario here and R1 so we need to access list 10 permit any and here we go this is a full command set for you access list 10 permit any to stop the implicit, implicit uh, deny at the bottom of the access list so now we create the access list in a global configuration mode you can use the show access list command press enter and you can see this is the access list status. We got the access list standard 10, which is two sequence 10 and 20, which is the first 10 we proceed. If it's match, it's stop. If not, go to the second line. So deny host, one host only, and the permit any other traffic. But uh, as you remember, in global configuration, when we create any edit and make any policy, it's uh, applied to entire the Router, but in access list we have to apply the access list for on a specific interface. Let's take a look. Just imagine we want to um, deny the traffic from the PC1 to the this server form. So it's very important where we apply the standard access list since the, the in the standard access list. The decision is only made based on the source IP address. If I we, first of all we can apply the access list in two direction inbound to the router or outbound from the router is very important inbound to the router outbound from the router the interface or this side interface inbound interface 
inbound and outbound it's up to you how you implement but it's very important because it's very important whenever you apply your standard access list the behavior and the result may be very okay so if I we create access in number 10 if we apply here an outbound interface of the R2 in, the, in this interface any traffic from the PC1 will be denied but we only want to the traffic from the PC1 denied to the server segment and the PC1 is still will be able to communicate with the other area of our network. So one of the best places to implement this access list is we can two options. We can implement an outbound of this uh, this area, actually this router R1 in this interface outbound or here inbound but the problem if we enable inbound any traffic is from the 192.168.2.101 is coming to here will be blocked here and we do not allow the traffic is goes from this interface to the R3 segment so we are going to this interface and apply our access list on this interface and see what is the result so R1 and let me show IP interface brief okay the gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 2 is going to the 192.168.1.1 segment I'm going to global configuration mode interface configuration mode interface gigabit 0 slash 2 and for applying the access list on interface we are using the IP access group command and easily okay let me zoom it IP access group use a question mark and what option we got here we can call the access list number standard access list extended or if we are using the name access list we can use the name access list you will see this example of name access list in the next video so IP access group okay we create number 10 question mark and we got two options for inbound or outbound traffic since let's back to scenario take a look at this we are our interface G2.0 here on this interface and we want to blow, apply the access list to the outbound interface of the R1 on this interface so we are choosing the out and press enter so now show access list okay access is apply and if I use the show run and go to the interface configuration mode you will see the IP access group 10 out is apply using the show run is another way to check your access list status is also shown here so let's back to the PC1 and try the how it works previously we can ping 192.168.1.10 and now the destination is still unreachable. If I go to the PC2, I have to be able to ping 192.168.1.10. And let's see. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Request timer. And now we got. So in this scenario, we can check 192.168.1.10. We still can see both web server from the PC2 but if we go to PC1 and try the web browsing 192.168.1.10 because of the access list actually deny and reject any traffic and the request timeout coming we go to the R1 and checking the show access list command and as you can see here we got some match traffic 10 line deny host 192.168 2.101 16 match which means that each ping is a count on a reject and since we check the communication from the PC2 we also got some permit matches here it's very important let me uh, show you again 16 and 15 remember I go to the PC1 try again try with the uh, server 2 also try again and go back to the R1 and this time as you can see this time we got more matches on a deny compared to the previous time previous time 16 this time 58 
and if I go to the PC2 and try to visit the web server number one, for example, which is successfully can see, if I go back to the R1, use the show access list, this time even the number of the permit access list also increase from the 15 to 20, which means that to, to visit the, the web server, it's uh, used uh, five additional packets to check the conditions. So it's very important. PC1 still can do the communication with the segment 3 here on the R3. Let's check 192.168.3.10. So here we go. Waiting for a ping reply. Okay, as you can see, it clearly shows that in this scenario, let me zoom out a bit for you. Okay, the traffic from the PC1 can come from here and easily move from this router and go to the segment 3. But when the traffic is from PC1 come to this router and reach to this interface, it will be blocked. In the next video, we will discuss about more complex scenario. This is a very basic and you see we got the limitation because currently we block the PC1 to access to the server segment. But uh, the problem is uh, we don't have any control if we want to block the PC1 only to a specific server. The extended access list will be helped. In next video before we're going to the extended access list, I want to show you if we implement the uh, standard access list in different places what will be happen. So thank you for watching. If you find this video informative and useful, please uh, subscribe and share this video with your friends. So see you soon. Thank you. Bye for now.